Hello and welcome back to Knights of the Old Republic 2. We are running away from Sleeps with Vibroblades and we're going through the fuel lines back to the Paragus facility. <gasps> and it's a little friend. He's okay. It's a utility droid. Looks like it's been hit with an ion charge and dumped here. Um, can he travel T3? All right, then uh, let's go. He's joined your party as they build to make programming spikes on demand and can also upgrade items if asked. He's a portable workbench and we can level him up. Fantastic. It should only be one level for him, I think. Yeah, I think so. Um, I guess I can give him another point in dex. That increases his dex bonus. So, Even though I'd prefer to like stick more in intelligence for him, like an extra dex bonus is still pretty nice. Skills, um, I need him to be all about repair, um, about repair computer use, that, and then I guess awareness. He doesn't really need computer use because we've got it. I'll put it into awareness, another point. All right, so let's go two levels. Nice, okay. I almost put it directly into computer use, even though I said we don't need it. That's okay. He's got three levels. Okay, that makes sense. Um, right, we'll do more in there. Beats. Um, I don't know. Gearhead's pretty good for him. Repair, security, computer use is kind of his thing. Uh, we could give him more health. Demol uh, demolitions being a cross-class skill, or being a class skill would be quite useful. Um, I don't know. Mm, it would be quite useful, but probably only for this section. I'll just give him gearhead. Give him one purpose and one purpose only to be the ultimate hacking machine. Now, I gave Atten the ability to use demolitions, didn't I? Just thought I'd double check before I try. Yeah, yeah, you can do demolitions. Ooh, and there's the um, concealed stash. So we get hangar 25 control conduit. Nice. It looks important. Okay. We can grab the sonic mine. Okay. Lesson learned. Um, right. Uh, ooh. It's more droids. Our easiest enemy to fight. Oh, it's so good to be back with droids. Just kill it. Come on. Perfect. Almost got it. Another level up. Oh, don't mind if I do. Right, um, let's level up. Skills, um, points and everything. Uh, feats. Uh, as much as I'd love to get that, we can't quite get it. What level are we? Probably level six or something like that. Yeah, that seems about right. There's three levels for T3, we're either six or seven right now. Um, hmm. Could get our gear head up. We could get improved conditioning. We could also get vitality to give us more health. Regenerating force points is quite useful. It's more quickly regenerating. Same with vitality. Both of those are quite useful, but mostly only out of combat. Hmm. Okay. Uh, these precise shot ones seems very good. We could, like, get character one of those right up. They'd be able to just, yeah, annihilate people. Hmm. Um, that's fine. I think toughness is quite nice. It would get us six health right now, which isn't amazing, but could just be enough to make us survive something. Let's get a point in toughness, you know? And also toughness does level up, so you- Ooh, wait. Subtracts 10% of any damage over 20 points suffered. That's nice. And then this one. Get an extra vitality point. And in addition- this is an addition, so that's another vitality. But the middle one sounds really useful. I, I, I mean, yeah, it depends what you're getting, but like that could that's gonna scale well. Okay, powers wise. Um oh, I was gonna take heal, wasn't I? That seems sensible. We'll accept it. Nice. Uh little heal. Just to keep Atten uh, topped up. Another droid? Oh wait, um, Hey, um, 
Why you use your eye on striker? I hear you. Let's settle this. Okay. Let's settle this. Hey. Maintenance droid. Kill it with your um stopping me killing these things. Right. There we are. We we just got stopped there. Is that because I'm still in stationary? Yeah, I guess I need to turn myself to aggressive. There we go. Right. Get it. I was just trying to get close enough so we didn't trigger that, Time to even that the trap odds. there, basically. Time to even the odds. There we go. Right. Hey, Atom. Uh, just disable the mine. Right. Just checking Say whether you can word. do that in this game. No, previous game we couldn't do it either, so I just wanted to check. Whether you could disable the mine and switch character and go off and do other things, while, or whether you have to watch the animation. Let's say you have to watch the animation. Anyway, cool. Droids, easy to kill. Uh, ooh, motion tracker. Is that something that you can use? You already have one. Okay. Uh, you do have a self-sustaining unit, though. We generate vitality points. Quite nice. Another one over here. Sonic detonator. Okay. Sonic grenade. Then over here. Ooh. I was worried that container had nothing in it and was just for scenery, but there we go. More credits. Nice. How many credits do we have? Um, we have 2,000. Ah, not bad. Not bad. So we've already been in this section before. Yeah, this is all linked to the rest of the Paragus facility. Cool. Uh, so we'll head through here. And... Ooh. Plasteel cylinder. Yeah, we'll grab that. Uh, ooh, what's down that way? So going up allows us to connect to the rest of the facility, but where does this way take us? Oh, it allows us to, uh, light this Let's thing. Let's settle this. Okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 see, I see the mine. Thanks for, uh, warning me. Disabled. Looks like we didn't actually get any XP for killing that mine. Time to Which take I guess you means maybe size. you don't get XP for killing mines. I thought you got it in the first I was sure you got XP for killing mines in the first game, but maybe I'm wrong. Time to even the odds. Maybe you didn't. Okay. Uh right. Now the save, and we'll head our way up here. Right. So it's now just the uh, clean run to the hangar, I think. Emergency field station. Shut down the emergency field. No custom charges detected. Right. We can now head up this way. It should have linked where T3 was and where we are now. I th or we were. Yeah. Oh wow, there's a lot of them up here. Okay. Let's get them. Come on. Just kill him. Nice. More where that came from. Over here. Get him. Can't wait to get to level 8 so that we can uh, get that flurry without any negatives. Then it's just going to be uh, a lot of destruction. I wonder what... Yeah, I didn't actually check. We are level 7. All right, cool. And Atten is now also level 7. Oh, I need to be on that screen. No, this screen? There we are. Sneak attack. Skills. Given these points. Uh, and we're good, right? Yeah. That. So now we might be able to um, pick up those things. So this is where T3 was knocked out. We never actually went along this way before. I just want to check if there's any loot along here. But this should be the way that we can't go. Yeah, we can't go through that containment field. Right. I don't imagine there's anything else to find along this way. Because uh, we've already been through it with T3. So we should just be able to head out here and towards the hangar. I'd hope. Right. Yeah. Good. 
Gragas docking me. And again, we've already been through all of this with T3, so we can just grab all of this stuff now and be very happy with the current situation. Uh, that one looks like a larger level. Okay, get him. Please don't set me on fire. I won't appreciate it. Right. Killed it. Uh, heal. Oh, you leveled up. Atom. Just say Just the word. Just want to help you out here. Um. Please run forward and kill these things. Clear the first one and then just kill them. Oh, yeah, there we go. Right. Ah, uh, they're down. Not great. Um. Shock arm. This should do a lot of damage now. Right. Time to even the odds. It's fine. Back up in a second. There we are. Uh, it's fine. We it looks like we didn't get the heal from that heal. I, other than that, other, yeah. Either that or it was just kind of pathetic. Uh, right. Oh wait, like this? That's better. Yeah. Cool. Level them up. Just say the word. We are a little low in health. We'll just do another little heal there. A little save. Okay. Is there anything else we couldn't access back here? I don't think there was, because I think that only door we couldn't access we actually opened later. Yeah. That's fine. Um what? The console? Huh? What is that piece of junk saying? Says Atten. He says he can open the door to the hangar. He just needs to access the hangar terminal up on the platform. How can you even understand that noise? Um. Well. I served with a lot of utility droids in well many years ago. Oh, I don't know why any of that. Like, why, I don't know why all of that wasn't, you know, voice acted. But there we go. Maybe that's um, some of the uh, new content. I don't know. Anyway. Replace the hangar conduit. And now the door is open. Nice. Got XP. Uh, heal. Quick save. Head on down this way. Right. Uh, ooh. Go get it. Oh no, there's too many. Okay. Energy shield? Get it. Right. Don't have any more ion grenades. Uh, I do want to use another one of these then. Get it. I need to use shock arm, shoot it. Actually, instead of shooting it with that, switch to rapid shot. Right. We're still not looking great, but that's okay. Okay. Get this one. Then the last one, get it. Nice. Okay. Alive. Got that. Uh, might as well energy shield. Let's go. That's the one I'm after. Yeah, get it. Keep up with that one. Okay, another hit. Hit it. Okay. Uh, 
That's fine. Oh. Right. A lot of dead droids now. Okay. Uh, you can probably repair... Actually, uh, yeah, we'll probably just repair him. Why do I have to choose which character to repair there? I only I have one droid. Right. Um, heal. Just say the word. Yeah, I need you to disable this thing. Thank you. Well, try and recover it first. If we can recover them, we can sell them, which is useful. Still too low. Okay, it didn't explode instantly, which is nice. Right, I am going to quick save as well. What? Is it doing some kind of dance down there? Hmm. I assume it can't see me. Wait for it to walk to the other side and then uh, disable the trap. Nope. Can't. Oh, no, it can see me. Um, chill out over here. Right. Get it. Uh, I thought I disabled that. Okay, I guess. Oh, it's because I switched from at and I did stop disabling. Forgot that one. That's still alright? Yeah, because he can't be knocked down. That's a really weird ability for a bit where he can't be knocked down if someone else is still up. So. Basically, it means if they target him, it's a free win in any fight because they won't stop targeting him. It's very weird. Anyway. I'm not going to complain while it's uh, saving me. Do a little quick save. Cool. Ooh, remains. A droid neural pacifier. Okay. Cool. Hey, Atten. It's uh, your time to shine. Right. Okay. And then get this one. Still looking good. Then get this one. Good. Right. We're back to leading the party. Oh, might as well heal again. Oh, and quick save. It's been about 10 seconds. Right. There we go. Open the door. Decontamination room. Okay. So we can use repair, that's three parts, to go through it, or we can destroy it. Yeah, let's just repair the main console. Uh, access remote camera controls. Main cam contamination chamber. Yeah, looks good. Uh, yeah. Let's just disable it. Yeah. That's fun. Right. Uh, other things we can do? Open the decontamination chamber. Nice. Easy. Got some experience. Got a quick save. Let's go. Right. Uh, through here and... Well, a little security. Ooh. A metal box with repair kits and credits and um uh, yeah more upgrade equipment and the ebon hawk oh there are things near it though are they friendly or not friendly just gonna check not friendly huh well time to kill it for xp That was so easy. Oh, still can't run underneath it. That's fine. Just checking if there's more loot around here. There probably isn't, but... Yeah, it's a broken droid. Nice. Worth just grabbing whatever we can get. It saves us having to buy it later or 
whatever we need to do later. Uh, energy shield and credits. Giving us a ton of energy shields. Also, what I have noticed is that I was just thinking about it. Like, it's really advanced. Like, from the first game, this one's given you a lot of tools really quickly. Like, it's given you Jedi powers immediately. It's allowed you to upgrade things a lot quicker. It's like giving you the first level so much quicker. Yeah, wonder if that was a deliberate one so that if you came from the first game to play the second game, it's like, oh, you don't have to start from zero again. You actually start from, you know, quite a little bit in in terms of your progression and you can regress further. I don't know. Just interesting. Anyway, quick save and on to the Ebon Hawk. Oh yeah, I'm leaving for good. Oh, do we get to play the best bit of the game? We do! Oh yeah! Oh, we're shooting Sith soldiers. Okay. Uh, oh my god, the sensitivity on this is so low, by the way. Like, this is me moving as, the mouse as quickly as I can in a lot of these places. Okay. That's fine. Die. Oh my god, it's also loud. How many of them are there? Oh wow. Oh, that's much better. Um, Freya, your hand. What happened? There is no time. We must leave. Oh, okay. And we're gone. Oh no. We're told what would happen if you shot and fire into these asteroids. A big explosion. If they hit us, we're dead. But if they keep missing us, we're dead. It's great odds. Somebody shut that trash compactor up. Hmm. Um. Uh. Can we jump to hyperspace? Not with all these asteroids around us. We'd enter hyperspace in pieces. We have to clear that field first. Thing is, we clear the field and they're gonna have a clear shot at us. Okay. Um. Is there anything you can do? I'm doing all I can, and that's not enough. What'd you do to make these guys so mad? Now, either they hit us and destroy us, or they hit an asteroid and make the whole field go Nova. Okay. Well, uh, do your best to keep your distance. We'll get out of this yet. What are the asteroids? They can be destroyed by us as well as them, can they not? That'll take out the whole field, the colony, and maybe us. We might not even be able to jump to hyperspace in time. Then we die here. Choose now. Um, well... Uh, I did say that we're going to be trusting, we're going to follow advice, we're going to learn what people are teaching us, so, um, do it. Hold on, this is going to get a little rocky. Well, now that we just killed a planet, maybe one of you can tell me what's going on. Because between assassin droids, a Sith Lord that looks like he sleeps with vibroblades, and being target practice for a Republic warship, I was better off in my cell. The Republic warship was the Harbinger. It was seized on its way to Telos by the Sith. They sought you, Jedi. Um, it was on its way to Telos? Yes, to aid in the recovery effort there. Many roads lead to Telos, including ours. Not like we have much of a choice, the Paragus astrogation charts being what they are. It is where we must go, and where the Harbinger was bound before our unfortunate encounter on Paragus. Uh, okay. So... 
How did you track me down? You were difficult to find, but coincidence was on our side. When I learned that you were on the vessel, I knew the Sith would not be far behind. When we intercepted the Harbinger, it was crippled, drifting in space. It was a simple matter to board the vessel and rescue you. Unknown to me, however, the Sith were already on board. Just as we made the jump to hyperspace, they fired upon us, nearly destroying the Ebon Hawk. Okay. How come I don't remember any of this? Whatever occurred on board the Harbinger had rendered you unconscious. Though your thoughts were faint, I was still able to find you sealed in one of the cargo holds. Okay. That's an unusual set of coincidences. True. But as one trained in the Force, you know that true coincidences are rare. How did we get to Paragus? I do not know how the Ebon Hawk was able to make it to Par- Be silent. We're having a conversation here. Hmm. Um, well, he says he repaired the ship and got us to Paragus. Repaired this ship? My eye. Next thing you know, it's going to claim credit for saving our skins. If that little noisemaker says it repaired the ship once, then it can prove it by doing it again. Go on. Get! Hmm. So, um... Well, why are they Sith looking for me? Because you are the last of the Jedi. Once you are dead, then they have won. Um, okay. But I was exiled from the Jedi Order. Exile or not, the Sith believe you to be a Jedi Knight, and that is all that matters. Okay. Um, what happened to the Jedi? The Jedi Civil War destroyed the Jedi. By the war's end, barely a hundred Jedi remained. Many fell in battle, and many more were seduced by Revan's teachings. Okay, but what of the Jedi on Dantooine and Coruscant? The Jedi Academy on Dantooine is nothing more than a crater that echoes with the ghosts of dead Jedi, and the Jedi Temple on Coruscant lies empty. The waters in the Room of a Thousand Fountains have fallen still, in reverence to the fallen Jedi and those now lost. Many Jedi blamed the teachings of the Jedi Masters for Revan's fall, and the civil war that followed. Hmm, okay. Well, um, if any survivors still live, we need to warn them. Perhaps, but they are Jedi no longer. If the Sith have not already slain them, then they will not help you, nor can you help them. Okay, then how do we stop the Sith? That is not an easy question to answer. This threat is greater than you know, and I do not believe it is a battle that can be fought. Okay. Well, what do you think we should do? Look, enough with the we already. We cannot hope to triumph against them alone. To stop them you will need weapons, allies, and a teacher. In the end I fear it may not be enough. Okay. What do you mean? You fought in the Mandalorian Wars, and it cost you everything. Are you willing to sacrifice as much again? Hmm. Well, this is self-defense, not war. You are not listening to me. This is not like any field of battle you have ever fought in. Think carefully on your choice. If you choose to fight, if you choose war, it is a path few turn from once the first steps are taken. It carries with it a terrible price. And in the end, you may find you have nothing left to sacrifice. Okay. Um. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of good options here. Uh. Well, let, let's just say I've turned away from war once. I can do it again. <laughs> like so many Jedi, you hear, but you do not listen. You have much to learn. But we have spoken long enough, and my wound pains me. If you have other questions, find me in the crew quarters. There we will speak more. Hey, don't stop your long, boring rants on my account. I was just getting sleepy-eyed. Also, in private, we will be mercifully free from the opinions of imbeciles and fools. Look, uh, not like I care or anything, but you might want to go check on our passenger, especially with that hand of hers. Okay. Um, she seems well enough for someone who has just lost her hand. I think she was barely keeping it together. I'm surprised she's able to stand with all that pain rolling off of her. Um, what are you talking about? 
Are you blind? If I were her, I'd be screaming like a stuck Minoc. Well, I mean, a very strong, manly Minoc. I think she's just too proud to show any weakness. Especially in front of you. Hmm. Okay. Um, well, you're right. She may be in pain. I'll see if I can help her. All right. We're now on the Ebon Hawk, and we're also level 8. And you know what that means. That means, well, one, we get an extra point in here, which we can put into strength. And two, we get some points in here, which we can put into our abilities. And three, oh, we actually don't get feats at level 8. Oh, never mind. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Sorry. Um... Now, Force Deflection is quite nice. It's, um... Neutral. Although... Um... With the lightsaber, that becomes useless. So maybe it's not worth taking right now. Battle Meditation? Plus two to attack rolls, damage, and will saves to all party members. Also increases vitality point regeneration rate of the party. Nice. And then, like, the higher levels? That's really good. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to take some Battle Meditation, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Let's take some of that. Okay. Another buff. Right. Um, let's go speak to Kreia, because we were, well, basically told to. This is the Ebon Hawk. So we can also have a look around. Security system? And that just allows us to look at cameras. Okay. That's fun. Useful to know where it is. Not useful to look at. T3? You alright? Um, how'd you get here, T3? Uh, you're deliberately avoiding answering. Why? Hmm. Well, let me check your core. I'll be careful, I promise. Uh, I just want to make sure you're alright. Just let me check, okay? I'm finished. Are you alright? Okay, the, then play the message. T3, I have one last order for you. Our master does not know about this, and I order you to keep it a secret. Every day as we build upon Korriban, more of his memories return, and the bond he and I share cannot hide it from me. He believes a threat lurks on the edge of the galaxy. Something that could threaten his power. I... I fear he will go there. And I fear he will not return. If he leaves, he will take you with him. But not I. He knows the bond we share may prove a weakness. But he will take you. If something happens, T3, then I need you to return to the Republic and find me. And if you cannot, then I need you to seek whatever help you can elsewhere. Whether Jedi or the Sith or someone in between. This is my last order to you, T3. Obey it, and do not let me lose my master, even if he believes he is protecting me. Oh, wow. I've never seen that before. That's really cool, as well, that it also references the previous game and your choice you made. I mean, obviously it's based on your choice of Atten, Atten earlier in the game, but that's still... Like, that, that is a cool message from Bastla. Friend of yours? What do you mean, once? Mm. So, um, she was, um, cool before she turned to the dark side. It was also a long time ago. Okay. Sorry to hear it. To hear it. Oh, she's dead? Oh. Who is that person the hologram was talking about? Hmm. Okay. Uh, is that message what you were trying to hide? Hmm. Okay. I don't understand why you're concealing that from me. Hmm. 
Um, I understand. I didn't think you kept messages like that. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'll be going now. Oh, wait. That message doesn't tell me where the Eppin Hawk came from. Why don't you have that information? Hmm. Deleted? By who? You deleted it? Why? Um. Okay. Something's wrong here. There must have been a reason for it. Um, okay. Don't be sorry, maybe you had a good reason, or you're trying to protect someone. Okay. Well, uh, never mind, I'll be going. Okay. So T3's follow, like, following Bastla's order and getting people together. Okay. And, but is evil Bastla, not good Bastla. Is this still locked? We'll be back in a second. T3. Um, this thing looks like you suffered a lot of damage over the years. Okay, how much damage? Okay, so you lost a lot of programs in your behavior core in addition to the damage to your frame? Okay. Oh, so this is... Um, why is T3 weaker than he was at the end of the first game? I get it. Well, I'm sure you'll gain that skill back. I'm glad to have you along. Okay. Uh, I might be able to upgrade your memory core. Okay. Let me take a look. How do you feel? Alright, due to your computer skills, T3 has gained plus one intelligence. Nice. Okay. Um, what do you mean I faded out there for a second? You were shut down. Okay, I have questions for you. Um, I'd like to upgrade your memory core again. Uh, all right, let's take a look. Another success. And again, another intelligence. Nice. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I'd like to upgrade your memory core again. Failure. Okay. Um, just going through this again. I'll try repair, even though my repair isn't good. I like that one. Must have left a Hydra spanner in there. All right. Uh, tr try again later. But nice, we, we've upgraded T3 quite a lot, but... I mean, you know who this is. It's HK47. This looks like the remains of an HK unit, but older and more corroded than the one you encountered on Paragus. Its power core still carries a charge, but a number of critical parts appear to be missing. Diagnose the droid. Look, oh, I like how it switched over to T3 because he has the repair skill. Looks as if the droid is missing four critical components. It's droid processor, a replacement droid chassis, the control cluster is supposed to be score, uh, stored in the chassis, and its vocabulator. I'll take the vocabulator and insert it into the core. Okay, step away. Okay. So we need some more parts, basically. That's fine. Alright, head through here. So this is where Mission lived. That's fine. Candorus's um, garage. That's the that's the hyperdrive. Um, this is where Mandalorian girl lived. And here is where nobody was, but Freya is now. Hello. Have you come for more answers? There is little more left to give. Okay. Well, is there anything I can do for your hand? 
This wound is a physical thing and will fade with time. It was necessary. Some things may only be learned from sacrifice. Okay. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. Okay, actually, let's go for the bottom one. If I'd felt the loss of your hand, what would have happened if you had died? I do not know. I fear that the consequences would have been more extreme. Hmm. Uh, would it have been lethal? Possibly, yes, and I fear it works both ways. I would not wish to test it, nor should you. Okay. Um, hmm. Well, I like if you're at your age, you could die at any moment. Uh, no. Well, we'll work together and be very careful until we can fix this. When battle is upon us, I suspect our minds are prepared enough to shield each other from the pain. I think we shall not have a repeat incident of what happened at Paragas. Okay. So, does our connection have any advantages? It seems the Force flows easily between us. When one of us manipulates the Force to heal or strengthen ourselves, the other is aided as well. You and Kreia possess the Force chain ability. When either of you uses a Force power on yourself, the other gains the benefit as well. A powerful technique indeed, though, as we have noticed, it has its drawbacks. Okay. Um, so what do we do now? I do not know. The Sith struck more swiftly than I thought, and they will not stop until they have you in their grasp. If you fall, all the galaxy will echo it. Okay. Is there some... is there any place we can retreat to? It does not matter where we go. It is not the destination that matters. It is the journey. All paths will take us to the end, whatever it may be, and no matter how strongly we fight against it. For now, we are bound for Telos, and that is enough. Okay. Where are we bound again? The planet Telos, decimated by the Sith during the Jedi Civil War. Before the war, Jedi who failed their training were sent to the fields of Telos to serve the galaxy, not as Jedi Knights, but as farmers and laborers. The destruction of Telos was complete. I doubt any Jedi remain. Yet there may be echoes of their passing. We shall see. Okay. And if we find no trace of Jedi teachings on Telos to help us? Then I am left with nothing more than we had already. My faith in you and your ability to meet what comes. Okay. Um, I have other questions I wish to ask you. Ask, and I will answer. Okay, so what's happened since the Mandalorian Wars? Much has happened in the galaxy in your absence, and since the defeat of the Mandalorians at Malachor V. Okay, tell me about the Mandalorian Wars. It is a tale you already know well. Almost a decade ago, the Mandalorians began preying on the Republic, bringing the fires of war to many planets along the Outer Rim. Their predations continued, winning victory after victory, until the Republic finally begged the Jedi Council for aid. Okay. Um, well, but some only some Jedi Knights answered the call, like I did. Indeed. The Jedi Council counseled caution and patience to assess the Mandalorian threat as the Outer Rim burned. Hmm. Um, and Revan and Malak refused to wait. Two Jedi Knights, Revan and Malak, defied the Jedi Council. They challenged the Mandalorian fierceness and brutality on the battlefield with a viciousness of their own. Revan's entrance into the conflict marked the true beginning and end of the war. It was Revan who drove the Mandalorians back into the unknown regions. Okay. Well, uh, even in that final battle, we almost lost the war. Yet Revan triumphed. But you know this, for you were there at Malachor V, when the Mandalorians were crushed beneath Revan's might. Okay. Um... Yeah, Malachor V is in the past. Let it stay there, forgotten. You asked what had happened, and I am telling you. The past sent echoes into the future, and what seemed a victory for the Republic was far from it. Many believed the Mandalorians defeated at Malachor V, but the Mandalorians taught the Jedi much through battle. And so it was that Malak, Revan, and the Jedi that followed them discovered their true natures in the Mandalorian Crusade. But you know this. Hmm. Okay. So, um, well, 
And if I could, I would have followed them. If you had followed them, then you would have learned the lesson of a follower. Perhaps it was fortunate you did not. As Revan and Malak fought the Mandalorians in battle after battle, they grew to despise weakness, just as the Mandalorians did. In the end, the Mandalorians had taught them through conflict, shaped the Jedi, and turned them into a weapon against the Republic. Hmm. Okay. And that was the Jedi Civil War. Revan and Malak, and all the Jedi that served them, turned against the Republic and the Jedi Order. Jedi fought Jedi. Revan was ambushed by the Jedi and captured. Malak continued to wage war in his master's place, inflicting terrible wounds on the Republic. Wounds that bleed still. Hmm. Okay. What happened to Malak? As all Sith do without a strong enemy, the Sith turned on each other. Revan escaped the Jedi and returned to finish Malak, and that was the end of the Jedi Civil War. Okay. Um, does Revan still live? No one knows, certainly not I. Korriban lies in ruins, Revan is gone, and the blade of war he promised to stab into the heart of the galaxy has withdrawn. Where Revan wanders now, I do not know. Okay. You're saying Revan abandoned the war? It would seem that way from a certain point of view, perhaps. The Jedi Civil War left wounds that have yet to heal. We shall see if the Republic has the strength to survive. Okay. Um. Well. Um. Then we must do what uh, we can until there's a chance to recover from the war. A culture's teachings and most importantly the nature of its people, achieve definition in conflict. They find themselves or find themselves lacking. Too long did the Republic remain unchallenged. It is a stagnant beast that labors for breath and has for centuries. The Jedi Order was the heart that sustained its sickness. Now the Jedi are lost. We shall see how long the Republic can survive. Okay, so... Um, perhaps it is better the Republic stands on its own. Yeah, let, let's not push for the uh, Jedi to come back. We shall see. The Jedi Civil War cost the Republic much. The resources of the Sith seemed limitless. The Republic's was not. Fleets of warships, soldiers, and people were lost. Entire planets were decimated. Their inhabitants dead, or refugees. It is a great burden for any civilization to bear. And this new threat. It is a quiet thing. Unlike the Jedi Civil War... It drives at something deeper than the strength of the Republic. It is aimed at you. Hmm. What do you mean? The Republic was never what was important, ever. It was but a shell that surrounds the Jedi, just as the teachings of the Jedi are a shell surrounding the heart of man. You see, the war, the true war, has never been one waged by droids or warships or soldiers. They are but crude matter, obstacles against which we test ourselves. The true war is waged in the hearts of all living things, against our own natures, light or dark. That is what shapes and binds this galaxy, not these creations of man. You are the battleground, and if you fall, the death of the Republic will be such a quiet thing, a whisper, that shall herald the darkness to come. Uh, okay, well, I have some other questions. Ask, and I will answer. Well, um, I want to know more about the Sith that were hunting us. These Sith, they seek the death of all Jedi, as have all the Sith, since the Jedi Order was first split. Uh, first split? Yes, the Jedi Civil War is not the first one of its kind. Thousands of years ago, the Jedi had another civil war that split the Order. It was a terrible thing. A faction among the Jedi abandoned the teachings of the Order following their own path. They waged war on their fellow Jedi, a war that raged across the galaxy. But these fallen Jedi were cast out, defeated, and they retreated to worlds in the Outer Rim. Over time, they took on the mantle of the Lords of the Sith, but in their hearts they never forgot the Jedi. The hatred for the Jedi Order burns in their veins like fire and echoes in their teachings. Revan tasted it, as Malak did. Hmm. Um, are they following Malak's path? In a manner of speaking. They are different from Malak 
in that they are concerned only with the destruction of the Jedi. For them, it is all that matters, all that ever mattered. It is a different war these Sith wage, a thing of silence and shadow. They strike from the darkness, hiding from the face of the galaxy until all Jedi are exterminated. After all the Jedi are gone, then the galaxy is theirs, no matter whether the Sith or the Republic rules. It is the dark side that shall reign, unchecked. Hmm. Okay. Um, the Sith on Paragus knew some Force techniques, but they were extremely weak. I believe them to be the result of special teachings. Their apparent weakness against you is evidence of this. Those Sith assassins can sense their prey through the Force. It is like a hunger. They feed and grow stronger when they are near Force sensitives. The stronger their prey is in the Force, the deadlier they become. As long as you were cut off from it, you were able to evade their sight. But after Paragus, I fear that you will be no longer shielded from their eyes or the eyes of their masters. The stronger you grow, the more will come. Okay. I have some other questions I wish to ask you. Ask, and I will answer. Okay. Um, well, when we're on Paragus, I could feel the Force again. Indeed. And was it the same as before? Hmm. It was like a whisper at the edge of hearing. If my suspicions are correct, perhaps the damage the Jedi Council did was not as permanent as they thought. It is not an easy thing to cut one off from the Force. Hmm. Hmm. I don't believe the Jedi would do such a thing. What did you believe? That you suddenly lost your connection with the Force without reason? Hmm. Um... But to cut one off from the Force, it's like losing all your senses at once. Indeed it is. It is much like losing one's ability to listen, or being put into a deep sleep, unable to awaken to the galaxy around you. Such a thing has been done before, when Jedi have pronounced sentence on their own, and exiled them as they did you. Hmm. Um, there must be a way to reverse what they did. It is possible that such a thing can be undone. Still, even so, the chances of the Jedi undoing such a thing for a traitor is a slim thing at best, assuming they yet live. Um, well, you said it's possible. How? Our link may have had other consequences. Perhaps you can hear the Force again, distantly, through me. If so, then there is hope. I may be able to teach you, train you to feel the Force again, and if you will not allow me to help you, then other Jedi must train you, or undo the damage they have done. Okay. Um, well, I will honor whatever training you wish to give me. Do not honor me, fallen Jedi. Honor it by listening and learning. Do that, and perhaps we shall survive this thing, you and I. I offer to train you to become strong again, to know the ways of the Force, and to hear the Force sing within you as it once did. Hmm. Well, um, let's see. Uh, I would welcome whatever aid you offer. Then our training shall begin. Whenever I travel with you, I shall impart what I can to you through my words and presence. Okay. Well, anything else I can ask? Ask, and I will answer. I don't think so. I've heard enough. I would see to that fool in the cockpit and remind him of our destination... I would not want him attempting to veer from Telos. Hmm. Well, um... He's not a fool, but he does seem very odd to me. Feel odd to me. He is a fool and an imbecile. His potential lies downwards, not up. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first and his allies next. Hmm. Okay. So we have a teacher, and we have a way to improve in the Force. Well, after that rather, um, you know, th th that was a heavy conversation. Let's speak to Atten, see if he'll lighten things up a bit. How's our passenger? She's still aging? Um, she seems fine. She just needs some rest. Well, she sure could use it. It might do wonders for her mood, too. She's lucky she's a Jedi. Or someone would have killed her years ago. I mean, how old do you think she is? She may have been good-looking once, 
But it takes some hard living to make creases like that. Ah, uh, good looking. Are you that desperate? Hey, I just got out of prison. If we had a decent Navi computer, trust me, we'd be dropping out of hyperspace into the Nar Shadda Red Sector right now. After spacing that old witch, of course. Hmm. Okay. Um, you know, ease on the, off on the insults. She was wounded helping us escape, remember? Whoa, all right, all right. Don't get mad at me. Hey, I didn't ask her to stay behind and get her hand cut off, okay? I mean, I appreciate what she did and all, but she could stand to lay off the insults herself, you know? Uh, yeah. Okay. Are we still on course for Telos? Like we have a choice? It's the only place Baragas had logged in their astrogation charts. Well, if you thought Baragas was dead, then Telos is a dying world they're trying to breathe back to life. Should be there before too long. You can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall behind you. Okay, I want to ask you some questions. Oh, no, no, no. Look, look, I respect your privacy. I mean, when have I ever asked you any questions? I mean, besides that one. Um, okay, what did you mean about the galaxy map not being much use? Well, the astrogation system is voice printed and locked down, but that T3 unit is doubling as the astrogation system. You can try to plot a course, but without that T3 unit to perform the calculations, you'd probably plow us into a star. As long as he doesn't steal the ship, we should be all right. Okay. Who voice printed the astrogation systems? I have no idea. Previous owner, maybe? I'd love to get it overhauled, but that's a major job. Besides, the droid will be good enough for now. Okay. Why would somebody lock it? Takes all kinds. Maybe someone didn't want anybody taking the ship out of the system, or knowing where the ship had been. Smugglers do it all the time in case the Republic decides to board them. Or so I hear. Okay. Uh, do you know anything about that assassin droid? Uh, not much, except sounds like it was after you. As far as I'm concerned, you handled that pretty well. No more droid, no more problem. Okay. Um. So, since when do protocol droids collect bounties? <laughs> yeah, well, you got me there. Look, droids, I don't trust them. That one we fought, some of them are built like that. Others just, well, break. In the head. Sometimes conflicting orders cause it. Give a droid too much data or tell it to do something it can't do, it'll crack their behavior module in half. Others just don't get memory wipes and they start going crazy. Speaking of which, I think that little trash compactor's long overdue. <laughs> Trust me, droids were made to break. And most of all, they're predictable and stupid. Okay. Um, well, let's focus on getting to Telos for the time being. So? What happened? Uh, what are you talking about? Don't give me that. There were plenty of times back on Paragus where a lightsaber would have been helpful. So where's yours? Well, um... Let's just say exiles aren't allowed to keep their lightsabers. Oh yeah? I thought a Jedi was supposed to be married to their lightsaber. Guess I heard wrong. Were you a single hilt or one of those double-bladed Jedi? Ooh. I don't know, we could be double-bladed. That could be cool. I was double-bladed. Huh. I hear the twin blades are harder to master, but they can make enemies stampede over each other running for cover. A lot of Jedi in the Mandalorian Wars use double-bladed sabers. A more aggressive blade gives you more slaughter per swing. Hey, you didn't go red, did you? Hmm. Um... I don't know, where do you want to say? I could say it was unique. Oh no, I, I like the third option. It's been so long I've forgotten its color. I thought a Jedi and their blade couldn't be parted. To lose it was like losing a part of yourself. Hmm. Well, it was a long time ago. Alright, forget I said anything. Like I said before, you can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall behind you. Alright. With that, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. Next time, we're going to Telos. See you then. Goodbye.